Now, when we go into the next phase, now we know how three-dimensional images are taken. Next is interpreting these images. Like what I've said, it is different in terms of interpreting two-dimensional radiographs and three-dimensional pictures or slices. Take this into consideration. When we look at a three-dimensional object, we readily recognize this because we have seen it, we have touched it, we have looked at it. When we get slices of, let's say, an orange, what we could now see is what is inside the orange. But if we get slices, each individual orange slice represents a portion of the entire orange. And because it represents a portion, it only shows you a limited view of what is inside. How many times have you seen this? Um, wherein you have an apple, an orange, you cut it open, you have a part of your orange or apple that is rotten, but the rest are not. The rotten part is only on a particular side, but does not represent that the entire fruit is rotten. That is how slices appear. It allows us to see which is which inside a particular fruit or object. Now, taking that into consideration, that is the same planes or slices that we see on our three-dimensional image. And that's why interpreting it might be something a little bit off because we are so used to looking at the three-dimensional image of our patient. If we look at osseous structures, we are so used to, um, in our anatomy, anatomy class, to look at this particular view. And we have no problem determining which is which. Orbit, zygoma, zygomatic arch, intraorbital rim, supraorbital rim, the nation, teeth, ramus, coronal notch, what have you. But when we take a slice of that image, we sometimes may be sent off because we're not used to looking at, uh, we're not, we are used to knowing and looking at what is inside, but we are not used to looking at an image of only a slice of our patient. In terms of basic interpretations for three-dimensional images, since it uses slices uh, as part of its diagnostics, this is the multiplanar views. We have basic views from CT scans based on anatomical planes. So from the axial plane, we get an axial slice of our patient. Take this into account. If this were my patient and I'd like to see a particular slice of it, say on the actual view, I get this image. It's just like getting a cut of a box or a fruit, as a case may be. And therefore, this particular slice shows me only this plane or this slice of my patient and not the entire head. From there, I could see certain structures like it has been cut here, Therefore, I see this cut section of the maxilla. I see the borders of the tip of the nose, going down to the cheek, going all the way back to where um, the detector could still see it. I have in this particular slice a portion of the mandible, particularly a portion of the ramus. That's why I could see this cut section of this rami. So this is part of the ramus. It has been cut at the level where your mandibular foramen is. That's why I see this particular notch where the mandibular foramen is on this particular plane. Now, one of the interpretation pitfalls is sometimes we see objects like this. Is there a hole on the palate of the patient? Remember that since we are only looking at this particular view, 
just like what I told you and like what we've experienced before when you cut a portion of a rotten part of a fruit everything the other part would be on a different slice and therefore this does not automatically represent a hole in the palette but rather this cut section does not show the roof of your palette okay now other CT scan slices or planes based on anatomical um, planes would be available such as the coronal view on your coronal view you see a cut section or slice of the tooth from the coronal plane and that's what you essentially see again depending on where you are you will see anatomical structures this is somewhere um, towards the premolar area cut towards the premolar area that is why you don't see the molars that's why you do not see portion of the chin because it's in the premolar area that is why you see this small entrance of your maxillary sinus at that point uh, portion of the zygoma at that site you do not see other structures beside it you do not see the ramus because this is a cut across the premolar area cut it through the sagittal plane you get a sagittal view and depending on when you cut it here I represented it being cut directly at the um, mid coronal portion or mid crown portion of your uh, incisor and therefore you see a cross section of the incisor I see the impacted tooth or palatal side because it is located at that particular juncture or point at an angle I also see portions of your posterior I see the frontal sinuses and all again what you see on CT scan slices is the same anatomical structures but it is only a cut section of a particular of, of your three-dimensional object which is your patient so you still see the same thing you still see your nation, you still see your frontal sinuses, the spinous sinuses, your turbinates, your teeth from your maxilla to your mandible. You see the condyle, you see the cranial vault, you see the cella, you see everything. It's just like what you have seen way back in anatomy class on your textbook, wherein images of the cross section of the head of your patient is. Um, shown but in this case it is a radiographic or it is a an image of it an x-ray if you will okay. so that is basically how a one part of interpreting three-dimensional objects or three-dimensional um, diagnostics it requires us looking into the different planes of your patient now, this is what happens happened before with CT scans and CBCTs also have the same basic function from this screenshot view of um, one of my patients using one of the CBCT software. You could clearly see that you could modify and look at both coronal, axial, and the sagittal views of um, your patient. You still have the same basic MPR view based on anatomical planes so you could see this particular plane showing the coronal view of your patient coronal cut it's anatomical plane you could still see the axial cut from this view of your patient and that forms your axial plane okay so that would be how um, it basically is in terms of multiplane review with the advent of um, better computing faster stronger more intelligent computers now we move into age of reformatting your projections now remember the three-dimensional image or picture I've shown you uh, the first few slides well again if you get those slices based on anatomical planes then you have the basic MPR views because your computers already has the three-dimensional objects 
and like what I said because our computers now are a lot faster that a lot better at computing than before they can actually reformat depending on what you want other oblique images now this is very useful particularly when we'd like to get a cross section of let's say our alveolus because our alveolar bone our jaw is basically curvilinear and if we simply get a cross section or a slice following our basic anatomical planes we will not be able to always get the cross section of our jaw on every single slice you'd have to look at all of the different slices this is how it basically looks now with reformatting the projections for the images with better computers better technology better software we could actually like in this case where I've used a specific software uh, from a CBCT we could identify and tell our computers what line we'd like to be project or what which slice would we want to see like in cases of impactions or in cases of implant planning we do not necessarily need the entire skull we could tell our computer to zero in on a specific part of our patient in this case the maxillary right uh, first quadrant so this yellow line limits what the computer will reformat and mind you the computer has the entire three-dimensional image but what I am telling my computer is to please limit the image that I would see only to this particular part or boundary more so I'd like you to create a cross section and that means a perpendicular cut across this curve line which represents the curve of my maxillary arch and that's where you would see this perpendicular lines in different colors shown in this particular window where I could get a cross section of this particular impacted tooth so from this axial view I could get a cross-sectional cut of this particular slice and that yellow line represents in, is represented in this window so I could see the relationship of that slice where my impacted tooth is in relation to the maxillary sinus the buccal palatal this is portion of your uh, nasal cavity uh, midline this is going to the palatal vault so the blue one is represented here and so on so I could get slices and if I would move this towards the anterior then I could also get the same perpendicular view I could even tell my computer because it has stored the three-dimensional image to get a specific view of or a specific slice of this patient like in this case this green block or window is represented by this line that means this window is exactly where this line is and that's where I could see portion of my impacted tooth that appears to its crown appearing to be pointing towards the distal side I see the second molar with two roots because this green line runs across the buccal roots that's why this does not show the palatal root because this is the particular slice that I'm looking at it in this window okay that is the additional projections that we may see the additional slices that may aid us in diagnosing so nowadays it's not just special with CBCTs or also with CBCTs not just 
your standard MPR views, your axial, your coronal, your sagittal views, but the computers can now create new projections depending on what you'd like to see. In this case, if I'd like to see more, I could just simply drag this and tell the computer to give me a picture beyond the maxilla or beyond the alveolus of this first quadrant of the maxilla, uh, first quadrant. Okay, so that is in terms of projection. Another important aspect, and this is another view of um, its advantage, another important aspect is with this ability, you could also determine specific measurements. And this is part of what your CBCT softwares could actually do. Again, this is a, a not exclusive with CBCT. CT scans could do the same thing, but it's a lot easier to do with CBCT since all CBCTs would have softwares given uh, in comparison to most CT scans wherein they won't give you um, the software itself. Okay. So um, in this case, it is in this screenshot view of again one of my patients. You could identify a clear cut section of a specific area. In this case, your um, implant site. And from there, I could determine a good dimension or geometry in terms of height, which is important for implant planning, and even the width. Another thing which is important in terms of interpreting is when we look at slices, and this is where sometimes people um, have mistakes or pitfalls where they get lost, is that what we view in this cross section is the plane or the slice that we tell our computer to look at. So let me show you. In this case, um, I am asking the computer to look at the cross section following this line of this specific area. That's where I plan to place the implant. That's why that's where I placed the reference or the slice. It showed me this particular slice or view of this. That's why you don't see the teeth beside it because I'm only looking at this particular slice cross section. From there, I measured it. It has about 10 millimeters height by five or almost six millimeters width. And that gives me a good idea of um, my implant side or drilling. But as I showed, will show here, I could actually create a different arbitrary line. Okay. And when I move that line and ask the computer, computer, can you show me this particular slice? which I'm showing um, with the mouse or the pointer. It showed me this. And what would be the difference? When I ask the computer to show me this oblique line, look at what happened with my previous measurement. Now, it's not just 10.4 millimeters. There's actually a few millimeters more. But that is looking at this particular line. And I won't be showing that specific line. What I will be show, what I plan to do is place the implant along this line and not along that particular line. So that's one of the pitfalls that we sometimes, like what I've said, need to retrain ourselves when we look at three-dimensional pictures. When we look at this cross section, this three dimensional picture, we are actually looking at the slice. And because our computers now are that good, software is a lot better than before, we could actually tell the computer to look at different views depending on which area we'd like to see. So, like what I've said, if I like to place the implants along this line, then this might be of use. But since I want to place the implant, along this particular line, then I should be taking a look at this slice more. Okay. Now that's very important in terms of 
interpreting anatomical variations like one published by a Japanese group shows a bifid in the mandibular canal and therefore cause a bifiding in the infraalveolar nerve very important in terms of surgery and that area and a picture of one of my patient wherein it shows lingual perforators and again from anatomy we know that this lingual perforators house a neurovascular uh, extensions of our lingual uh, neurovasculature uh, this becomes very important because this is this harvested area where I harvested bone from the chin this is a pre-planned depth based on what I saw from the preoperative radiograph I mean this is just a part of the assessment I just cut it off and what it just simply exemplifies is with CT scan or three-dimensional images I am able to determine up to where the lingual perforators are and therefore plan ahead of time how deep I could get into bone without having to deal with the possible complications of bleeding um, if I do come across your lingual perforators and all of the other inherent complications or such so that is how you we would use your three-dimensional slices to interpret your radiographs another important aspect of interpreting radiographs is with the use of this Hounsfield unit now I've said this a few slides ago that um, density in terms of CT scan in terms of 3d images has come to a point where in it has created a standard table to which we know that water for example has been set to a Hounsfield unit of zero and anything more dense than water has a specific point CT scan has been so precise that this number is almost always all almost always representative of that particular structure so the CSF would oftentimes be above 15 Hounsfield unit cortical bone would almost always be above a thousand Hounsfield unit so if I have less than a thousand Hounsfield unit it is most often uh, medullary bone if I have under 300 at around 50 Hounsfield unit above then it most likely is muscle and therefore in terms of interpreting the subtle differences in the density found in CT scans allows the interpreting radiologist doctor to determine what it is you are looking at in your 3d image so you now could not just see what is behind a structure you could even show high suggestions of what it may be you could say that what is behind this bone which appears to be a mass is somewhat that of fat is somewhat that of a fluid more dense than water but it is not a tissue because it's not as dense as let's say white matter see now that is where it ha diagnostic imaging has gone into this is something that you cannot do with uh, plain film radiographs so in terms of our field um, it has already been determined that different densities of bone have also different variations in the Hounsfield unit and this is very important especially to those who does implant okay. now in CBCTs like what I've said because of the cone beam that is not as that will not give you a reliable constant amount of radiation that will be detected therefore up till now determining the Hounsfield value in CBCTs is not as predictable not the same as that in CBCT that's why at the start I've told you that it appears to CT scan CBCTs are faster they give off less radiation but it is not discerning on soft tissue it does not show subtle differences between tissues you would see the shadow of a tissue in contrast to bone but that's up to where it could go you will not know whether that shadow is a certain tissue 
fat, uh, muscle, etc. Okay. However, what you could do see, which could be used in terms of additional interpretation, is the level of intensity. Yes, we do not have a predictable Hounsfield unit, but nonetheless, we still see a varying gray scale or the grayness or whiteness of a particular voxel or point in your CT scan. And like in this particular case where I've plotted a line and asked the computer to assess how much gray is it, we get intensity. Again, we do not get Hounsfield unit at this time for CBCT, but we still get the computer to determine the intensity, the whiteness or grayness of a particular point. And such, we may use this as a, an aid to determine how dense a particular structure is. Like in this particular case, I have pointed the end on this, which is obviously the cortex. And if you look at this histogram, you see that this point is very intense in terms of the entire line that I've placed. It's well over a thousand points in terms of intensity. Again, this number is arbitrary. It may simulate your Hounsfield number, but it does not really give off that Hounsfield unit. That's why it is most often intensity. No matter what they say, it's still not a um, an exact number as compared to CT scans, but it does give off a sign or a point that gives off how intense or dense the structure is. So this along this line is the most dense. And as I move along, definitely this would be medullary bone. And as you could see, as I move along the line, I have decreasing amount of density up to well this particular point. Now this is very important as well in determining bone densities for um, our cases very important in assessing what structures or calcifications or spaces do I see in terms of trying to interpret what it is found inside your three-dimensional picture. Now these are the basics for interpretation. Again, we, in terms of 3D interpretation, we need to learn or distinguish what we see in slices. And we see a slice of the three-dimensional object, our patient. We also could see with CBCTs, as much as with CT scan, variations on the intensity, which may be helpful in determining how dense most likely a structure is within the three-dimensional image.